Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop and Lightroom. In this video, we're going to take a look at frequency separation. So let's jump in and see how it's done. So here I am in Photoshop and I've got my image all ready to go. It comes from Photolia. There should be some more details up on the screen. Now to start off, I'm going to need two copies of my background layer. So let's press Alt, Command and J. That's Alt, Control and J on a PC. And I'm going to call this one Tone. And I'm going to give it a different color just for my own benefit there. Click OK. Then Alt, Control, J again. And this one I'm going to call Detail. Give it a different color again. There we go. And click OK. And just so I know where I'm working. Right, I'm going to need to my tone layer selected and the visibility of detail off just for a second. I'm going to go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Now, what I need to do is make all the tones sort of mush together a little bit. I'm going to bring this up a little bit there. Maybe to 14 works reasonably well. Maybe down a little bit. Let's go down just a little bit more. 12 looks good. I'm going to click OK, just so it smooths out those tones back onto detail and turn on the visibility. And I'm going to go to image and apply image. Now your settings here will depend on whether you're using an 8-bit or a 16-bit image. I know that I'm using an 8-bit image. I can tell that because it's got an 8 here at the top of the screen in my tab there. So for an 8-bit image, what I want to do is have the layer to tone. I want invert off, subtract, and 2 and 128. If you were using a 16-bit image, then I might recommend that you have invert on and you add and 2 and 0. Very similar, but the difference are subtle enough to make a difference. I'm going to go back again to subtract because, again, this is an 8-bit image. Right, I'm going to click OK. Now, back in my Layers panel, I can come up and change the Blending Mode from Normal to Linear Light. And there we go. Now, if I turn the visibility of these two layers off, you can see that there's absolutely no difference between the three layers together and just the background. And that is exactly what we want. What we need is Tone on one layer, Detail on another, and then together making the full image, which means that we can modify them independently. I'm going to go to Tone first. Now, I can use any of the tools that I usually use to modify an image. I'm actually going to go over here and choose the Clone Stamp tool for this and make it a little bit bigger. Now, whatever tool you're using, you need to make sure that the sample is current layer only. That's all you want. And that the mode is set to normal. Right, I'm going to come down here and choose my Tone which is going to come from sort of here-ish, I think, and then just paste over it like that. There we go. And maybe get some tones from over there. There we go. That'll do me. Now I'm left with the outline of the foot, which is part of the detail layer. So I can do the same here. And I can go and get the detail from the sand around and just paint that away, just like that. There we go. That's coming from tone, that little black spot. So we'll change that there. OK, let's do the others. I'm going to come up here and just change that. And maybe let's go the whole hog, shall we? And then detail from there. And I can just very quickly paint those away, just like that. Let's go and get the tone again. There we go. Really very, very quick indeed. Now, that makes for a great starting point. I might want to go in there and tweak it a little bit, maybe make it a bit more random. But you can see we've made a great headway into changing this image. Where it's really useful is if you're making a portrait. So let's go over to a portrait. Again, this comes from Photolia. And let's go through it one more time. Alt, Control, J for the tone. Let's change the color very quickly and then alt Control j for detail. There we go. Change the color again. Turn it off, onto Tone. Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And this time I need it to around about 9 or 10. Click OK. On the detail, I'm going to Image, Apply Image. Now I'm going to be virtually the same as last time. I want Invert Off, 
I want to subtract 2 and 128. Layer needs to be tone. There we go. Click OK. And then down to linear light. Now I can start working on it. This time, let's try on the tone. Let's try for the healing brush, perhaps. I've got this set to uh, sampled. So let's sample the tone. And we'll go in there and in there and in there. There we go. And very quickly, we can work this through. There we go. And let's change the detail. Again, I'm using the same brush here. In fact, I'm not even resampling it sometimes. There we go. And very quickly, we can start altering this image. So there we go. That is frequency separation. I'm Eric Rano. Thank you very much for joining me here. I'll see you next time at tipsquirrel.com. Bye-bye for now.